making a uh, presentation about the electric cooking uh, how uh, or the overall modern energy cooking uh, the session will be focused on that uh, how we can actually enable uh, enable the cooking in india and that's why we have started the concept for talk this talk series is going to happen in various areas which i will be talking in details so let me put my screen on presentation mode Yeah, hope my screen is visible. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so we are a modern energy cooking services program. It is a, a CDO funded program led by the Lagdo University, which Nick is going to talk more about the program and uh, it is also there. We are fortunate enough to hear them head. Uh, but I will be ta taking care of uh, mostly on the India session. What is uh, what is uh, this means for India? How it is actually progressing? So as we know that World Bank has recently published a paper which is saying that uh, 2.4 trillion dollar is the economic opportunity annually for the non-clean uh, cooking fuel. So this is the very big financial loss which we are facing. And in India, this also a uh, uh, equally bad situation. Four million people are dying every year globally. And India has this data is uh, 4,87,000. So this is the data which we, the World Bank has given to us uh, and 4 billion people don't have access of uh, uh, clean cooking. Next is a uh, UK aid uh, FCDO funded program uh, to support and invest in clean cooking alternative to achieve the transition from biomass to clean cooking. This program is pioneering e-cooking worldwide with the Arctic interventions in over 15 African and Southeast Asian countries. And Finovista, as you know, the in-country partner for the mixed program in India. What actually mixed program means to India and what how we have actually uh, uh, developed this uh, India as a strategy. So we said that uh, that uh, to transition from biomass to clean cooking, we require to have the huge landscape. And when you have the landscape, you require to bring all the stakeholders to, uh, to, uh, together. To doing that, uh, we are supporting the manufacturers as a first category. To provide the support to the manufacturers, we require to partner with various agencies, which we have partnered uh, and we are working together. And what kind of support we can provide? So innovation is, of course, the first uh, uh, first priority to promote, considering that device require a lot of innovation. Pilot and demonstration supports we provide. Policy we are providing. Skill up supports we are providing. We, we do a lot of eco, uh, ecosystem mapping, outreach and promotion, knowledge sharing, and visit and delegation. And in the manufacturers, of course, whatever uh, supports like user development, which we are doing, opportunity creations, market access, intermediaries, access to finance, access to technology. Today's uh, this current talk series is also going to uh, go to more over a culmination of everything. And of course, the partner we require to work with the government, non-government organization, uh, Indian agency, UK agency, exports, implementation agency, etc., including high commissions. Uh, recent uh, activity is actually going uh, really good, and uh, we have partnered with the CI in February, in December 2020 to organize. Uh, organizer uh, clean cooking session separately. There we had a very good representation from uh, various ministry. Uh, the two senior most people from the MNRA DPI were uh, this speaker, and uh, they have given their own perspective about the clean cooking. How what does it mean for India? Uh, we are fortunate about to hear the UFLA, who is our global lead awardee, uh, awardee for this year. So uh, I will. Uh, I I request uh, uh, yes to talk about when during this session. Uh, we have partnered with the Bayrak for supporting the uh, Bayrak Innovation Challenge uh, Award. Though this is not flight off because of the uh, financial reasons or not, but this was the one of the good success where the uh, where the first time government has actually talked about the supporting the clean cooking. So in a mostly go, a clean cooking innovation program, this was never the agenda, which we are pushing to the government for long time. Uh, uh, Mix has conducted mini survey on the mega kitchen. Uh, we try to map how the mega kitchen works in India and what kind of cook they're uh, cooking and what are the energy they are using. Uh, this, this report is available with us. We have did the 
रिक्वेस्ट थैंक यू स्टडी ऑन द कॉम्पैटिबिलिटी एंड एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक प्रेशर कुकर इन इंडिया and mix is conducted the disc based research explore the indian cook uh, food culture uh, and habit we have run the test uh, pilot of 20 staple and popular food uh, in india we are also going to talk about this uh, we are uh, india is looking as a global hub for uh, device manufacturing so we are actually trying to map our program country five countries which we have already mapped and developed a report which we are seeing that how we can push the indian company to be markets nepal bangladesh myanmar kenya and rwanda we have already uh, did that uh, uh, the another important point that we all know that national electricity policy is actually uh, asked for the comments and uh, in this entire policy electric cooking was not a agenda to the government has talked about that go electric campaign and they are talking about ev and electric cooking uh, electric cooking we have recommended our uh, our uh, our comment on that adding the electric cooking uh, electric cooking uh, for that agenda so uh, uh, spoken to the ministry of issues hoping that they will be accepting our recommendation they have uh, they have uh, they have uh, uh, they have uh, uh, promised us that uh, they will be putting to the committee and committee to decide Uh, this is the overall landscape of the clean cooking in india uh, but the the first part i have already spoken and then it is also uh, important for the greenhouse gas in, uh, perspective four percent of the ghg coming from the cooking and if you see this the data is old but uh, this we have to rely on this data because it's a survey uh, uh, survey data which 67 percent people still rely on the biomass lpg is another 28 percent uh, percent and uh, india is uh, also tried very hard to come in a clean cooking and prime minister uh, ujwala yojana is the uh, good initiative with we have provided 8 crores or 80 million connection to the bpl the below poverty line how to covered in 2020 and they are talking about another 10 million the challenge is here the 55% of the npc is important and government have to provide additionally subsidy support the LG, lpg consumption is increasing by 56% annually uh, which is a big de deterrent and electricity is actually in a uh, in all directions been very good scenario so in, uh, india is a electricity surplus nation now we have a zero reliant on the uh, the, uh, the modern energy if we add electric cooking uh, it will be a good boost India is the only uh, outlier in uh, the developed nation where we are not promoting the electric cooking. Yeah. Uh, several ministries, several department is actually talking about uh, 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 clean cooking, and uh, Ministry of Power is talking about national mission of uh, uh, electric cooking. Uh, national mission of electric uh, clean cooking is going on. Next mission of solar cooking is going on. So a lot of discussion is going on there in the ministry. Uh, the uh, important point this slide is also very important for everybody so in india so people have the in monthly income of 5000 rupees which is a 50 pound uh, 74% of the rural household ready to spend 391 rupees per month and the people have a monthly income of 2500 rupees indian currency 59% of the household ready to pay some amount of Uh, a cost for electric fuel uh, sorry uh, uh, for the cooking fuel so this uh, this if, this is the data uh, released by the mini, uh, ministry of petroleum uh, petroleum and gas in in association with the crisil so uh, this is the though this data is to the 2018 data but still it's uh, valid uh niti ayog in the energy security scenario they have pushed that uh, electricity cooking is going in a big way which we have talked uh, already so i'm not talking to this is the, our uh, uh, smap uh, uh, world bank mix uh, program has actually uh, conducted a, a study and we found that single solution is not viable and we have did the five uh, five concurrent mapping so we uh, we we said that uh, sometime it required to mix electricity gas sometime it's required uh, to have lpg together uh, epc induction and all uh, which require in require in a uh, multiple combination 
and we also agree in india that uh, uh, it's not one solution fit for all so we require to have the multiple fuel possibly the uh, epc electric uh, devices or gas and uh, as per the as per that studies uh, we realize that uh, the the modern energy is going to be cheaper and at some point of time uh, it is it is going to be even cheaper than the current sources of biomass uh, i will not talk too much on this this is another important slide the india has a 383 gigawatts of electricity and in this 383 uh, gigawatts of installed capacity, that's the latest data, 61% is coming from the thermal. The good part is that thermal is regularly reducing. Last, uh, last to last uh, quarter, it was 62%. And if you see this uh, uh, renewable energy sources is keep increasing. So means our electricity is still not 100% dirty fuel. So it is also coming from the renewable sources and government has already committed that 40% of the installed capacity is going to come from the non-fossil. It's, uh, it's also under discussion, it's going to be 60%. So, so this is the another, another opportunity for the in this area. Then government recently has come out with a charter to provide 24 by 7 power supply in uninterrupted power supply. So this is the another opportunity where the government is taking the responsibility to provide the electricity and the total supply uh, in the last month in the April month data was just 118 gigawatts. So see the data is that install capacity is 383, total supply is 118 and the peak load is 182. It's still even if the peak load we are very very less. And uh, though the data is improved over last year, but still we have long way to go. Uh, electric cooking is of course uh, uh, fit or uh, uh, fit in the most uh, advanced uh, uh, cooking. Uh, it is affordable. It is available. It's convenient, safe, emission, uh, emission and uh, efficacy wise. It's actually a wonderful de uh, device. And uh, why electric cooking is important for India? So. Uh, uh, 48 to 72 billion uh, uh, units is expected to consume by e-cooking in 2030. And the household air pollution is actually increasing and 4% GHG is coming from this area. Uh, this, is the, this is the current range of devices in uh, coming in the electric cooking and electric cooking is, is the nowadays or the overall modern energy cooking is coming in a big way. So these are the three devices which already saw for a long time. These are the dev new devices which uh, which actually talking about that uh, uh, combination of uh, uh, EPC, combination of uh, induction, combination of so solar cooker. But of course, uh, when we are adding more and more devices, costing more and more. So we have to also be sensitive enough to how much a user can pay. Uh, electric pressure cooker, as per our research, is the best fit device in this area. Considering the EPC consists of hot plate, insulation, pressure cooker, and automatic controller. That's why it's very, very efficient. Uh, I uh, and this uh, if I talk about the EPC market in, in India, when we started our program in December 19, only five or six brands were available. Now over 20 brands are available in a market. So all the big names operating in India are in this area. This comes in aluminium and steel bodies, 700 to 50,000 watts is a typical size in five to six, uh, three to six liter, four to 10,000 rupees are uh, the devices cost in, in the retail price. And we are expecting that one of the mass volume will be there, so cost will further go down. The rice cooker is another popular electric uh, uh, device, which actually comes in aluminium and steel body. Uh, the, the typical range is very low, 4 to 10,000, and cost is also very, very less. But everything can't be cooked here, and the, all the big brands are operating in this space. Induction is uh, induction cooks a very, very popular device in India. Though there are the challenges, there, it comes in a very heavy wattage. So most of the, of the good devices come in 1800 to 2300 watts. And the cost is very comparative, but you require the additional utensils to cook. 
and all the big, uh, big grants are available. Uh, you can find these devices online, offline easily. Uh, and challenges in the other cooking is, of course, uh, the we know that uh, uh, firewood and uh, firewood uh, and the biomass is not sustainable. When we talk about the firewood, uh, it has a big challenge that 23 percent of the forest is non-sustainable, and of course, it can't be available in the urban setup. And uh, we have a big population living, a uh, big poor people living in urban. This is our finding uh, that. Uh, in, in electric pressure cooker, we did some cooking and we realized that, uh, that uh, uh, it, it can be uh, suitable for all means. It is convenient and it can cook most of the devices, which uh, uh, which uh, Ufla is also going to talk about, so I will not take too much time. Uh, uh, this is the recent development. So we are not only we are talking about electric cooking, now the government and everybody is talking about electric cooking. Uh, uh, we, we have did a lot of uh, research in this area. The minister, uh, minister himself talking about uh, to promote the electric cooking. And this is the comparative analysis. The cost is very, very low. You can have the any type of cook. This is the normal Indian household cook. So, khichdi, uh, khichdi dalia, potato boiling, dry vegetable, chana, gravy. You can get, uh, cook any gravy item, pulao, all types of pulses. You can cook idli dosa is the another area. So, you see the most of the cooking can be done. And the institutional cooking is also possible. So, I will not take too much time on, on this. And thank you for patient listening my presentation. Uh, uh, thank you. And... Uh, with this, I pass my mic to Ed. Hope I'm not very late. Vimal, that's an incredibly detailed um, overview of the, the the current situation and the growth of interest in in e cooking in in India. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you're going to make the slides available to to colleagues because I think if they were like me, they would have been struggling uh, in some ways to keep up with the the, the depth of information that you were providing there. Um, so uh, we've been delighted to work with Vimal and his colleagues, and you can see my colleague Nick on on here as well. I will also be joining the, the the discussion has been very much leading uh, alongside Vimal in this in this work. Um, my name, as, as uh, Vimal said, is, is Ed Brown. I'm Professor of Global Energy Challenges at Loughborough University in the UK and the overall lead of the of the MEX programme. Uh, I just wanted to say really a, a very few words here. Um, in one is that um, I think it's really important that the, the broader team was was uh, able to join the discussion today. Unfortunately, I do have to run off immediately after having done this because I did have another uh, prior commitment, but I wanted to make sure um, I think the, the other thing to say is um, the growth of interest in electric cooking has been really, really rapid. Um, so uh, three years ago when we began this program, um, we had at that point been thinking about uh, electric cooking for maybe a couple of uh, a couple of years. Um, and at that point, when we spoke to most people around the prospects for electric cooking in Africa and Asia, their immediate reaction was, you're mad. You know, this is this is something that is uh, too expensive. Uh, there were too many interruptions in supply and so on and so forth. Um, I think what Vimal has shown in terms of going through this whole series of initiatives in relation to this is that the myth that electricity is too expensive for cooking has um, gradually begun to be revealed over the course of the last few years. And that's due to a number of different uh, um, factors. And I just wanted to just kind of mention a few of those here. And really, this is pulling out what Vimal has, uh, uh, has already said. The first of which is that we have, for the first time, undertaken really de detailed studies around the, um, the, the, um, the, the cost um, effectiveness of cooking with electricity in different countries, in different contexts, with different uh, cuisines and so on and so forth. And I think uh, Vimal noted a number of the publications on this, but one I draw your attention to is the one that Vimal mentioned, which is where we've done a collaborative study with ESMAP of the World Bank. Uh, it's called Cooking and Electricity uh, a Cost Perspective. And it is looking specifically at the situation now and the situation a couple of years down the line in terms of the competitiveness of cooking on grid uh, and the competitiveness of uh, opportunities for cooking off grid and there are some real opportunities here where where cooking with electricity is emerging as at least price competitive with cooking on biomass 
uh, and LPG, and in many cases, beginning to be um, significantly lower in cost than uh, cooking on those alternatives. Um, the second point, I think, which Vimal illustrated extremely well, is that when we started talking about electric cooking a few years ago, most people's understanding of what that meant was uh, your basic cheap hot plate um, that, that, uh, uh, or a really large kind of scale uh, oven with, with hot plates on the, on the top of it. What is emerging at the moment is that um, there are some real opportunities to gain much more e e efficient approaches towards cooking with electricity. The, the EPC, which uh, Vimal has talked about quite extensively, is the ultimate example of that. But induction stoves, electric pressure cookers, uh, much more uh, insulated pots, a whole range of different uh, opportunities to make cooking with electricity even more efficient than it currently is. And I can also see um, the, uh, the, the, the one of the um, interesting uh, that AJ has just put into the um, the chat is around the importance of the flavor of food and we've also been doing some really detailed work at that level as well in terms of what what is acceptable for people what what ways will people change the way in which they in the, which they cook if it becomes more convenient or if it becomes cheaper or a whole range of different interactions and one of the things we've picked up is often there's a lot of assumptions about people's behavior but it's not until you actually engage with people around what are the opportunities to do things in different ways that you begin to see real uh, um, opportunities where it was judged before that those opportunities were not there. Um, the fourth point I wanted to make is um, clean cooking is often referred to as, as, as the poor cousin of electrification. So when we talk about energy access, a lot of the attention goes on um, uh, electrification, most of the expenditure goes on electrification. So I was involved in the uh, um, coordinating group for the energizing finance report by SE for all for the last two years. And one of the things we picked up there was that was an excitement that the amount of investment in uh, clean cooking had increased from about 40 million to about 80 million over the course of the last couple of years, which you look at that, it's a really quite significant increase. However, when you look at the estimates by the IEA of how much investment we need, then it's a drop in the ocean. However, if you look at the overall investment in electrification, those levels for just for, for um, Africa alone are something like 18 billion a year. So I think that's a really important other component of this discussion is that if just a small portion of the electrification investment was, was spent in making sure that the, uh, the grid was effective and able to support electric cooking, then um, the, it dwarfs the amount of funding that's available specifically for clean cooking. So if we see cooking with electricity as part of the overall makeup of what can be done through electrification, then I think there's a really interesting other alternative component of this. Finally, we mentioned right at the end of Bimel's talk, the opportunities for adopting a much cleaner in terms of carbon approach to cooking. Sometimes we're guilty of thinking about clean cooking in a very short term perspective. For obvious reasons, we want to see uh, uh, significant increases in the numbers of people that have access to clean cooking. However, we are in a world that is changing rapidly and in a world where uh, the commitment to decarbonisation is accelerating. We had the COP coming up in the UK later on this year, but we can also see that without recognising the rapidity of change that's going, to be, that's going to occur, we won't be making the right investment decisions now. So we need not only to think about the makeup of our um, uh, production and generation systems now, we also need to think about what they're going to look like in 10 or 15 years time. So if we're thinking about carbon in terms of our strategies for dealing with the clean cooking challenge, then we need to be looking at that in terms of LPG as a transition fuel, which is far, far uh, more effective in its use of carbon than the biomass approaches that we currently take, but also with electricity. At the moment, 40%, um, uh, possibly 60% coming from clean sources, 10 years down the line, that will be a lot higher. So if we're looking at long-term investment into really clean solutions, 
then clearly electricity has to be part of that long term planning process and that long term planning process needs to begin now. So um, they were just some reflections on some of the issues that Vimal has raised. I think it's massively exciting the opportunities that there are for really being an instigator and an innovator in this space. India has so many advantages in that regard. And we're really looking forward to working with our Indian colleagues in helping to make this a reality as we move forward. So Vimal, thank you so much for the opportunity to contribute to this discussion. I'm really sorry that I have to leave now, but thank you so much. And I really hope that you have a really successful and exciting discussion around these issues um, over the coming minutes. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ed, for your inaugural remark. Indeed, it's a very, very useful. Of course, uh, uh, that uh, our Indian colleagues will be more, uh, will be very insightful uh, to hear you, and we're hoping to uh, have you more in the future talk series also. Thank you. Uh, yeah, with this, uh, we like to move to the next session, and would like to invite Dr. Nick Russo to moderate the session on the talk on clean cooking. So I request the other panelists, Yash and uh, Vishaka, to uh, switch on their uh, video. Okay. Thank you. Over to Nick. Thank you, Vimal. Can you hear me OK? Great, yes. thank you. OK, so um, Vimal and Ed have set the scene. We're looking very widely at um, how to support the transition towards clean cooking. Um, and today's seminar is going to give us a chance to hear about some very concrete initiatives which are very successfully doing that in India and demonstrate what India can achieve both domestically and potentially then also for wider markets. Uh, I should say uh, also that um, I think Ed's already acknowledged that we are very pleased with the program in India that Vinavista has established. Uh, they are an amazing group uh, and have been very, very energetic and successful in making connections across the ecosystem. Um, and it's really exciting for us to be working with India at this point uh, when you as a country are on your journey towards cleaner cooking and really are grasping those benefits and the opportunities that come with that. Um, and it's been a privilege to work with Vimal and to meet the people that uh, he's been able to introduce us to. Uh, to understand how we can work together um, to save lives, to achieve economic opportunities and improve the environmental impact. Uh, all of these things which can come from shifting from, to cooking with electricity in India. <clears throat> so this series of webinars, just briefly, is alongside a parallel service that I'm organising, looking at uh, examples from all over the world uh, of people who are looking to develop successful businesses around providing clean cooking solutions. Uh, and we've got two coming up shortly on, on promoting clean cooking to consumers and on consumer finance. Um, so that might be of interest to, to those on this session as well. Um, but today uh, I'm going to introduce two panelists who are developing very different approaches to clean cooking solutions. It illustrates how broad this area is. So Ofla uh, has developed a range of award-winning electric pressure cookers which are very energy efficient. Uh, and as we've already said, energy efficiency is one of the keys to helping people to understand the benefits. Um, and they recently won the Energy Prize as part of the Global Leap Award for electric pressure cookers, which MEX has funded uh, and has now produced a, a buyer's guide, which is generating a lot of interest across the developing world. And then we're going to hear from Ojabox, who is developing service models that provide households with cooking device options to help them select and to give the women who do the hands-on work of cooking the opportunity to really experience these directly. Um, so I'm going to be uh, hearing from um, Yash and Vishaka, and then we're going to have a chance to have some questions. And I notice there's already been quite a lot of dialogue in the chat box. So first to, to Yash, um, can you briefly introduce Ofla? Uh, and describe your products and, and what you see as their main strengths. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Nick. So, hi, this is Riyash here. Uh, I'm the founder of Ofla. So, we have recently participated in the Global Leap Award competition, which has been conducted all over the world by Next and Clasp. So, in that, our cooker has been identified as the best energy performance category cooker all over the world. 
So I'll tell you the energy performance. I'll quickly take you through what we are doing exactly. So many, I just, I was just reading the messages. The, what people had that they had doubt that uh, if you make the lunch or dinner, that consumes more electricity. So I'd like to tell you that uh, you won't consume any much electricity uh, compared to gas. So I'll just share my PPT. What I have done is just like. Okay. Okay, we can see that. Thank you. So can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so in that, if you see this, uh, the electricity consumption, which our cooker, the uh, plus smart cooker, which is uh, which uh, the electricity consumption is just one unit for three hours of cooking. That is seven to eight rupees in Indian rupees. That is an INR. If you buy a gas cylinder, which is a 14 kg, 14.2 kg to be accurate, the, if you use that for three hours of cooking, it consumes one kg of your consumption, which is 61 rupees. And if you uh, say LPG, there are many com companies like MNG, etc. If you take their uh, example, if you take their connection uh, for three hours, it will con consume same as one kg, but the rate is 56.62. So overall, accordingly, if you see that our uh, electric cooker, which is much, I mean, energy efficient, Thank so our uh, electric is much energy efficient and what we are doing is we are developing this with the quality that is much much uh, important thing what i would like to do that in india what happened is if we took out the survey according to survey that there are many uh, incidents of cooker blasts or anything happening in the indian households so we want to minimize that and what we have come up with this model as this is the best energy performance cooker because what we have done is the outer body which comes any other company you take any company it just gives you a thickness of 0 0.3 mm we are giving that of 0 0.6 mm that is directly double so on the consumer point of view we, we are not keeping anything uh, like that that the uh, person will face any problem or anything plus if you come to the service part of our cooker so till now we have been selling this in India for the last two years and the service we haven't received any single service complaint till now. And we have been That's... now, uh, we are now manufacturing that cooker in India. So we are the first manufacturer in India to make this cooker here itself. And we are going, I mean, we are, uh, we are with the next program and everything. And now we are even going to export that sooner. Right. Thank you. Oh, that's really exciting. And, um, I think it's a testimony to what you've done that you produce something which is on, on our independent tests uh, against a, a whole range of other models have come out as a, a world leader uh, and, and got that prize. So congratulations on that. And we continue to, to work with you to uh, open up new market opportunities. Um, but I want, to, I want to talk about the future, but let's first of all hear about Vishaka and Orja Box and your, your work. Vishaka. Uh, Thank you, Nick. And um, thanks, Yash. I'll just uh, put up my presentation soon. Uh, is my presentation uh, audible? I, I can see you now, yeah. Could we right. invite others to go on mute so that we can make sure we can hear Vishaka? seems to be some background noise thank you okay yes All right. um so uh, i'm presenting uh Urja box here uh, we have set up uh, three services uh, mainly we are going to set up clean cooking demonstration station uh, stations uh, mainly because uh, the main reason we find why people are not adopting clean cooking uh, devices in semi-urban and rural areas is that they cannot see uh, many people using that. So unless I see someone using it, I will not adopt it. So uh, that is uh, main behavioral uh, hurdle that we see in uh, rural and semi-urban areas. So 
to motivate people to use more and more clean cooking uh, devices we will be setting up clean cooking uh, stations in uh, educational institutes offices hostels wherever the opportunities and uh, those will serve as a uh, small snack corners or uh, tea stalls kind of thing which will uh, demonstrate all available clean cooking devices and people can choose from a variety of clean cooking devices wherever in the energy ladder they stand whatever they can afford and whatever fits into their daily schedule they can choose those uh, clean cooking devices and with variety slowly people will get motivated to use more and more uh, clean cooking devices that's the idea behind setting up the clean cooking uh, stations Secondly, we want to promote clean cooking devices as livelihood sources. Just to give an example of uh, using solar cookers for uh, processing food, maybe making jams, pickles, or cakes and biscuits. Huh? So that will definitely uh, increase uh, the adoption uh, in rural areas because they are not only they will not only be demonstrated as cooking devices, but something that will also uh, give livelihood. to uh, rural women and third is we want to set up clean cook stoves shops which will be called as urjaksham which is energy enabled wherein uh, they will be end to end solutions for the end users where uh, people can buy uh, clean cook stoves and choose from a variety of clean cook stoves they will also uh, serve as a repair and maintenance uh, station because most of the clean cooking devices people don't buy because they are more concerned that if something fails out of uh, or is go goes out of operation that where where shall we go for repairing and maintenance and how much it will cost how long it will take and that is why they stack up fuels or they are a little averse to using uh, clean cook stoves uh, just because they do not have enough hand holding to give them confidence about the sustainability and reliability of clean cook stoves cook stove shops will definitely be useful uh, in further enhancing the usability of uh, uh, clean cooking devices and they will be backed up with uh, innovative financial schemes as well uh, because finance is another hurdle in adoption of clean cook stoves so these are the three areas where we are trying to provide some uh, innovation in services uh because there is uh, um, there is more focus on designing new devices but uh, the service side is definitely a larger weaker uh, element in promotion of clean cooking that is what we have realized so we have uh, done some uh, extensive ground so and we realized that this is generally the fuel stacking pattern uh where uh, which uh, is which is clearly visible uh, on ground where rural poor will generally be using firewood dung cakes charcoal uh, kerosene which has reduced a lot and lpg has been introduced but lpg is used very sparingly again firewood is used mainly for water heating in many indian homes so if we are just talking about uh, cooking uh, or indoor pollution then even if people cook on lpg they will heat water using firewood or using dung cake uh, cakes for a longer time so uh, that is something which needs to be taken into consideration and uh, we have seen that the usage of renewable energy fuels is mainly uh, in uh, urban affluent areas because they are more aware about it and they uh, can afford to have a cleaner stack so uh what we really have to aim initially is to uh kind of improve the cleanliness of this stack uh what they are using uh, maybe eliminating uh, one by one uh, the unclean uh, fuel uh, biochar is a very good source uh, carbon neutral source of uh, briquettes and uh, by by the way of briquettes and pelleting but again the quantity of briquetting and letting biomass or uh, uh, agricultural waste is very less or very uh, minimum uh, electricity which uh, obviously uh, seems to be a very promising future but again the awareness and uh, is very low and it is very difficult uh, to convince people about the uh, taste flavor timing all of those things and only demonstration perhaps is the way out to for a swifter transition 
and uh, with the interactions yeah this is what we have come out with so thank you yeah no i think absolutely um there's nothing more powerful than having a chance to see something and even to to smell it and to uh, taste the experience uh, as you say people are not familiar uh, in some of these places with these devices um i'm uh, looking at the the chat there's a there's a lot of discussion going on about what kinds of dishes can be cooked uh, in an electric pressure cooker or, or in other devices. Um, and there's certainly scope for innovation. Um, uh, many electric pressure cookers now can be combined with an air fryer, and that provides a different way of cooking uh, that complements the electric pressure cooker. And we're seeing that growing in, in interest in, in Africa. Um, but certainly, I'm, the, the research has to look at people's actual cooking needs uh, and make sure that they are reflected. And that's where Vimal and his team are trying to understand that and seeing where electric pressure cookers or other devices can have strengths. Uh, and of course, India has many uh, similarities to other countries in Southeast Asia with some of the dishes. And, and, the, and if we can get the right products developed in India for Indian cooking, then that has huge potential market opportunities overseas as well. Um, so I'm seeing lots of queries. I guess there's a question about the, the, the kind of viability of electric cooking. But I think across India now, electricity access is growing rapidly. Um, but the, the quality of the electricity continues to vary. Um, and so we're looking at, uh, as, as Ed was saying, solutions which include other fuels and potentially also uh, energy storage options. Um, does anyone have any any questions they'd like to raise about the future? I think the world is changing, um, and there are channel there are definitely challenges right now. But I think there's there's uh, our analysis is showing that there are there are many parts of the world that are ready now to move to electric cooking because they have electricity, and the cost of the alternatives is much more visible. Um, just uh, keen for anyone who wants to raise their hand. Uh, and to ask a question to the panel, um, if you can use the the, the little uh, um, device on on the the team thing where you can put your hand up, be happy to to take a question and have a discussion about that. Yeah, Shang. If well, what people think about their questions? I mean, what sort of um, demand are you seeing for your products in India? Are they are they selling well? So can I just pardon your question? Actually, I didn't hear you. What 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 sort of demand are you seeing? Are, are you being successful in in selling your products? Uh, so I'd like to tell you that I mean we are totally. You can see that even our website, we are totally out, running out of stock because the demand is continuously increasing. And what uh, quality we are offering at what price point? So people have now known that. If you take a 10,000 cooker and if you take a 5,000 cooker, people here have infinity that if I take a low range cooker, so it will come with a low quality. But no, our motto is mainly that so everyone should afford it and everyone should use it. That is our main motto to make this. So at this price point, we are selling so that we are getting a good demand. I mean, even from Amazon and even from our own website. Great. Good. Okay. And, and, Hopefully that will enable you to scale up production. Um, I know that we're talking to ESL and other bodies around bulk procurement of cooking devices that will help to enable the price to drop further. Um, and we're certainly interested in different models of enabling users to spread the cost. Um, Vishaka, I, can you say a bit more about your experience of um, demonstrating cooking devices to, to women in different contexts? Um, and how do you how do they understand the cost uh, of you know, if they're looking at an electric device? It's not always clear how much is being saved. They've got a pile of fuel and they can see how that is being used. How do you help people to see that the, the savings that they can make and the other benefits? Um, so uh, we uh, the demonstrations which we conduct are generally in three stages. 
first stages where we introduce the device that itself is the uh, first hurdle that people have not seen a variety of uh, cooking devices like many people have not seen uh, electricity being used as a cooking device or biogas uh, for that matter or even solar so we have around nine uh, types of solar cookers but uh, in rural areas especially people most people have not seen any uh, so solar cooking device so the first thing is they get to see the devices second step is they get to see how it cooks so that is the next question that whether it really cooks and how it tastes what is the taste of the food and how long it takes or how quicker it takes what are the advantages disadvantages of that what is the space that the device will take and then they come to the costing of it so uh, so what we have uh, found out that if we try to tell them uh, the the base price they generally compare these days with lpg because that that is the fuel that they consider to be the costliest fuel which is around 900 uh, uh, rupees per bottle so uh, so they compare it to lpg that if we are using lpg say for 3 months because they use lpg sparingly just for making one meal or just for making rotis and everything else is done on some other uh, cooking device so they try to compare it with that so we are spending so the uh, annual spend uh, monthly spending is somewhere around 1000 rupees for uh, 600 to 1000 rupees for uh, cooking fuel so if that is reduced by even say 100 or 150 rupees they are happy to Uh, consider uh, buying a new device uh, we have not come across anyone asking for any subsidy or scheme from government that is one very uh, promising thing that so if they can clearly see that there is a reduction of effort and reduction of cost which is going directly from their pocket they are happy to buy but they are looking at financing schemes like say emis or uh, buying it through uh, they if, if they procure it in bulk quantity what will be the cost advantage that will they will get and repair and maintenance that is a major concern that they have that if this device fails how efficiently will it be repaired and what will be the repair cost whether they will have to throw the entire device away or and buy a new one because then that disturbs the whole cost economics totally absolutely no that makes yeah. sense yeah. i i can see that and i think we've heard that from previous studies when people were offered um uh philips uh, hot, uh induction stoves there was a study that terry carried out i believe um where they they were given these philips induction stoves and they used them for a period of time but after a while something happened and they would go wrong and there wasn't any backup and they would then move to more of a generic product because there was service and support there and yash can i ask you are you offering uh backup or maintenance or are your products uh long lasting what's your response to the the need for people to have long life with their devices uh so so if you buy a device it uh, actually it may mean uh, it will go till at least 5 years so we are making with such a quality that it goes with good quality and uh, i mean people should not uh, think that uh this device is not working now it's been only one year or two years or something like that so we are giving a that quality that it should go around till 5 years more than 5 and but nothing uh, no well as in 5 years and okay, even the well, maintenance part what i am telling you is uh, as i told you that there are no uh, there are no i mean uh, uh, service till now I and mean, there was no service request till now so okay. for the maintenance what we have done is we have tied with different partners so if there is no person available there will be a home pickup and there will be home maintenance okay that's good to know kemal you, you put your hand up yeah thank you nika i have one question from vishakha so vishakha you mentioned that your third point is that you are also going to provide the services to the devices so what will be your model so are you going to provide services to any devices which is the cooking device and you are uh, planning to uh, have your centers across india right as per the business model uh, yes we are planning to set up this clean cook stove shops which will serve as the repair and maintenance centers also 
so any device which people have which is not working uh, they can just uh, register with the center and within a stipulated time uh, we can get back to them and tell them whether it is repairable not repairable and what would be the maintenance cost and everything so right now we are trying to find out what kind of failures are there with uh, how much of them are repairable and because uh, you from the usage perspective also what i've seen is that especially with electrical devices uh, if the voltage fluctuates which it normally does in rural areas it affects the performance very badly of any electrical devices be it refrigerators or tvs or, or whatever and uh, as we know that power supply is there but power quality is a very a uh, major concern uh, in most of the areas so you will have a voltage uh, even frequency much uh, lower than the rated frequency so uh, we see that the performance does get affected with that uh, similarly with lpg uh, gas stoves and all if uh, women are not or anyone who cooks is not trained on how to use that devices we find that there are more requests for uh, repair and maintenance where the burner is not working properly and then there are chances of uh, accidents because of that uh, so mm -hmm. even as yash mentioned the pressure cooker accidents are also mainly due to because people are not aware of the safety uh, measures that they have to uh, follow when they are using such devices so uh, you know we want to prepare uh, promote the clean cook stove shops as a holistic approach to address all of these issues not Thank just um, yeah. sorry no that's that's really good to know and um I, i'm conscious that you work with samashit envirotech um they were your partner in this work and uh, i was very impressed when when we came out to india uh, and and we met the leader of that um and and she developed this uh, approach to helping communities to select the device which reflects their preferences um and i i have developed something similar based on the mex research around the world because there are so many factors which determine the right device for the right family and and as you say how how they can get trained the skills that they've got the education level but their preferences you know they they are it's a very personal thing cooking um and it's great that we can offer people different options um and i think that that is important that people feel that they can continue to do what's important for them uh, as we go forward and i know you seeing vishaka kind of maybe in a in a in a village or in a community that maybe one or two people are the ones that start off uh, accepting the new th devices and then because they do it other people learn from them and and follow their lead is that kind of model work where there's uh, early adopters uh, yes that generally uh, is the case where you know uh, maybe one or two families will start using and they will kind of uh, be the uh, point of promotion for uh, others to adopt uh, the cooking devices and they will kind of you know have an interaction between them but it usually happens in closer networks so like uh, the family's closer network will kind of pick up on those things uh, but also there are uh, some barriers re uh, regarding this i personally have experience regarding solar cooking so in my family there are members who like that i cook you uh, use solar devices for cooking but they themselves think that oh it is too much of work so we will not heard of that but uh, yeah so uh, it it takes time i mean yeah sure and the other model that we've seen in kenya uh, there's an organization called bida sasa and they work with women's groups so they will go and arrange a meeting with a group of women that are supporting each other within a village uh, and they will demonstrate like an electric pressure cooker to them and then the group will buy um if there's if there's 10 women in the group they will buy 10 pressure cookers but they buy them in sequence so they all club together to buy the first one and so one of the women gets the first pressure cooker then they all club together to buy the second one so they don't have to take out a loan they don't have to be involved in the cost of microfinance um but over uh, 10 months maybe they each will have a, an epc uh, and that kind of collective approach seems very very productive uh, yeah i think something like that you know as i said there has to be uh, some innovative models around financing and incentivizing clean cooking yeah. so unless there are some incentives uh 
whatever it is maybe social or cultural or money wise there have to be some incentives uh, for earlier yeah. adoption of uh, clean cooking devices yeah thank you and and yash can you tell us where you're next going are you, are you developing new products are you wanting to expand your production what's your your next 6 months going to consist of uh, yeah, so now we are going to even expand our production. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are already expanding our production already that is in the pipeline and we are introducing some new models and some new technology models I would like to say. Yeah, I, okay. won't, I won't disclose that much, but we are coming up mm -hmm. with some other technology models so that people okay. people get it much easier to use it now. For what, uh, okay. what happens is Many people working in IT and everything, they don't have much time. So for them, there will be a different uh, model introduced. So that their time will be saved. They won't, I mean, they won't uh, need any maid or anything. So okay. it will have all the facility that if you go to your job in the morning, just plug in your electric cooker, put your uh, ingredients in that, close it, put the timer and you can leave. That is there right now. But the next step is, you put, you just switch on the electric cooker, just close it, just put all the ingredients. You go to your office, and before you come uh, come to home, the, your food will be ready in that. So that is the next thing we are working on. I think, and what you're talking about are people who, for whom convenience is the main driver, and they're very busy, and and they want everything to be done easily, uh, and that that is typically true of the kind of more affluent families. So thank you. No, that sounds exciting. I hope hope it goes well. I'm glad you're getting the investment behind you. It sounds like you're doing well to expand. Kushaka, <laughs> what would you say your next six months looks like? Uh, uh, we have planned uh, some demonstrations in rural areas. So there are around seven demonstrations that have been planned uh, in uh, rural areas in Maharashtra. And uh, we are looking forward to set up uh, at least three cook stove shops in the coming six months. Yeah. Okay, great. And can I ask Anya, both of you just to finally finish? And India is a, is a fabulous country with such a great range of different cooking cultures and regions. How are you seeing different regions having different needs? I know it's something that Vimal has been doing a lot of research on, but I, and maybe Yash and Vikasha, just a, Shaka, just a final comment on are you targeting regions or are you trying to cover everything? Yeah, is your is your device designed for different cooking cultures? Yeah, so what we have done is uh, we have come up with uh, mainly what all uh, cooking people do in all different areas for like South India, North India, East India and uh, uh, Central India. So we have uh, compared the main staple foods and we have then designed the front PCB panel accordingly. So that it oh. caters to everything. Okay, great. And Vishaka, are you targeting certain regions that you think are more suitable or are you aiming uh, to go everywhere? Uh, in, uh, we are not targeting region as in north, south, east, west, but we are looking at urban and rural uh, kind of okay. uh, demographic difference. Because in uh, rural areas or remote rural areas, uh, people don't use uh, boiled, like, that is rice mainly. They will be use, uh, using local varieties of millets to make rotis and uh, their food stuff. And uh, the cooking timings also vary between the rural and the urban areas. So we are trying to uh, divide, uh, design our demonstrations according to the urban food style. So when we are uh, demonstrating in an urban area, the food which we cook on our uh, cooking devices is more inclined towards the urban dishes like say pav bhaji kind of thing but when we do it in the rural areas then the variety of food that which we demonstrate is more suitable towards the rural dishes so that is how okay. we you know, I think. right thank you both that's been amazing I've, I've really enjoyed this it's lovely to hear about what you're doing and to hear the development so Vimal do you, do you want to end this uh, session oh Thank, thank you, thank you all. And it has a very good panel and uh, different views. We, we, we like to have one focus on the uh, most universal service part, which is very, very important 
like we, when we met several people, several agencies, they always used to say, especially the government on bulk requirement, EDSL is keep asking, the NTPC is keep asking us that how we are going to ensure that these devices are going to work for longer time. So I think Vishaka model is a really, really appreciable answer. Yash has rightly mentioned that the device's life, he is expecting about five years or so. So which is the robustness of the devices and plus in case something happens, the uh, service model has to be clear. So we are happy uh, happy to hear the, that uh, our companies are doing good and then uh, 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 getting recognition also, getting finances also. So we are seeing one of the companies got that. And we are hoping that Vishakari can also succeed and she is launching very soon a uh, product. And with this, uh, uh, Nick, you uh, why not you are announcing that we are, we are going to have this uh, talk series over the period and uh, uh, covering the all the aspects of the cookie. Absolutely, yes. So we're working together on a whole series of these sessions uh, with different areas that we're going to focus on, um, focusing on the support that we can provide through the MEX program, um, but also on the policy shifts um, and the energy uh, and, the, and the kind of modeling that we're doing to understand the landscape better. Um, so I hope that those who've joined this one have found it useful. We continue to be interested in your comments and suggestions and questions. I think Vimal's given the email contact, um, but we would welcome you to future ones um, and look forward to the community that we're building. Thank you. Thank you all. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Yash. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.